Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday morning in the old cookbook show. Today we're going to do a recipe out of this cookbook. The Golden Jubilee Recipes, Ladies Aid Society of the Poplar Hill Church of Christ. Um, so the church itself was founded in 1820. This book is published in 1937. Uh, so the church is 116 years old. I guess the Ladies Aid Society had only been around since 1886, which makes it 50 years old, their Golden Jubilee. Um, this is a very typical small town Ontario, Canada church community cookbook for the most part. Um, lots of recipes, most of them skewing towards uh, recipes that are for sweets, baking cake, cookies, that sort of thing. Not as many recipes for, you know, savory dishes or main dishes. Which is typical for for a lot of a lot of these church cookbooks and community cookbooks. So today we're going to make a cookie, and like always, we start out with some butter in the bottom of the mixer, and we'll start creaming that together. Now, unlike most community cookbooks or church cookbooks of this time period, um, credit is not given to the individuals who have sent in the recipes. Each recipe is just pre presented, but anonymously. I guess the uh, the ladies or the officers of the Ladies Aid Society of this particular church didn't want to spread the joy too much. Now I've got flour here to that I'm adding salt and baking soda. And we'll just give that a bit of a stir. Turn our attention back to the mixer here and I'm going to add in brown sugar. Two cups of brown sugar, massive amount. And we'll get the mixer back on. Now the recipe we're making is called German Crisps Cookies. It's a refrigerator cookie. So we're gonna make the dough, roll it into a log, stick it in the fridge overnight, and let the flavor develop and the texture develop. Um, for some cookies, this is a very important step. The name, German Crisps, I don't know is, I don't know if there is a German link necessarily. Um, as with so many things in North American cooking, there's often a, a country name associated with the title of the recipe. Sometimes just to make it seem exotic. Uh, sometimes it's just called that because you got the recipe from the German family down the street or the French family or the Italian family down the street and has really nothing to do with any sort of national cooking whatsoever. Um, and other times it's just a, a misunderstanding of what the, the item is actually called. So I'd be interested when we get to the end, anyone with German descent, um, is this close to a style of cookie that you would have in Germany? Next in is some vanilla. And then we'll start spooning in the flour, salt, and soda mixture. At this point, I'm gonna put in the nuts. Now, the recipe said to use walnuts. <laughs> um, the walnuts you get at the grocery store are typically English walnuts. I can't stand the flavor of English walnuts, so I've put in pecans. In this time period, 1936, 1937, even though they say walnuts, they just say walnuts. I love black walnuts and white walnuts, which are normally called butternuts. In this time period, in this area of the world, um, even when I was a youngster, black walnuts and, and butternuts were fairly easy to get. You can get them today. They're really spendy, really, really expensive. You have to order them on the internet, have them delivered. Um, I've got some here, but they're far too expensive for me to throw into a cookie that I've never tried before. So pecans, believe it or not, were the, were the budget alternative to the walnuts. Um, and I've tasted the dough. It tastes amazing. So it's gonna be great. Now, I'm supposed to wrap this up. Um, Actually, it doesn't say to wrap it up. It says to form into a long roll 
and let's stand in a cool place overnight. Doesn't say to wrap it up. Plastic wrap, as we know it, wouldn't have, wouldn't have existed at that point. So it might have been put into a log with a, maybe a damp tea towel over it. Doesn't say refrigerate it because not everybody would have had a refrigerator in 1936 or 1937 in rural uh, southwestern Ontario. I think everybody at that point would have had access to electricity, whether they had electricity coming to their farm. Um, completely different uh, set of equations. I'm going to wrap this up in plastic wrap, which I have to go back into the house to get because I hardly ever use the stuff. Now, if I wasn't following directions, I would have done this as two separate logs. Um, this seems a little bit long and unwieldy to me. Okay. Once it's wrapped up, it's easier to shape. Okay. A little bit warm here in the studio today. I had all the heaters on because it's really cold outside. I'm going to stick this into the fridge. I'm put it on a baking tray. I'm going to stick it into the fridge. Um, in about an hour, once it chills down a little bit, I'll bring it back out and I'll roll it to see if I can get it round-ish. Um, otherwise, we'll see you here tomorrow. Now, I haven't got these in the oven yet. And there's already some changes that I would make. Already piles of changes that I would make. That's gonna to make too many cookies. Um, so if I was to do this again, I would probably only make half or maybe even just a third of the recipe. I would also break the dough up instead of making one large log like they told me to do. I'd break the dough up and make several smaller logs with a smaller diameter, more manageable cookies. Same time, uh, I'm probably only gonna cook that much. Same time, this type of dough lends itself incredibly well to freezing. So, I mean, I can slice the log into smaller pieces, wrap it up and stick it in the freezer and then just cook it down the road. Every once in a while you want a cookie like this, if they're any good. If you want a cookie like this, you just take them out of the oven and you slice some off. Now it says to slice thin. I don't know how thin is thin. Let's try that. Last one on the tray and into the oven. Moderate oven, 375 degrees for 10 minutes. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Jules. Hey, friends. It's cookie day. It is cookie I day. I always do like cookie day. So this is from the Ladies Aid Society of the Poplar Hill Church of Christ. Uh, Poplar Hill is a village the other side of London. Ontario. Okay. And these are German crisps. Okay. Ginger crisps or just crisps? German crisps. Okay, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Crispy. Mm-hmm. That's actually quite good. Mm-hmm. This is a nice cookie. Hmm. Okay, so. What's, is there an extra flavor in there? No, it's just brown sugar. It is really a brown sugar, crispy brown sugar cookie. Great. Yeah. I would cut this recipe in half. For sure. 1936, in this area, farm area, they were probably cooking for a More massive, than just... yeah, a massive family. So are you telling me that there are a huge number in the freezer? <laughs> All right, that's a few more. That's a, <laughs> right. so we've got some spares. So if you stop yeah. by, we've got some spares. So we'll... I will be cutting that up and putting it in the freezer because you mm -hmm. just, I won't even cut them into cookies. I'll just cut the log up into probably four pieces. Hmm. Toast oven size. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so it's really easy to cut this recipe in half. It'd be super easy even to cut it into a quarter, which would be more appropriate for today, I think. You get about this much? Yeah. This is, this is a really good cookie. One um, A biscuit almost. 
Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.